Hello there everyone, The Andrada here, and welcome back to episode 9 of our FTB University Let's Play series, where today we are working on getting our inscribers set up and, well, trying to get into AE2. Let's get started. Alrighty folks, we are back at Castle The Andrada, or Casa The Andrada, my bad. Um, and we did have some visitors here, you know, we went and raided a pillager, you know, outpost last episode and it looks like they sent out their war party to come get revenge but they saw me and they they ran off in fear as you can see on the map they were literally outside of my door i stood out there and i said what do you think you're doing here i'm gonna and I take you out and they said oh i'm sorry sir we'll, we'll leave you alone and then they ran off into the river okay and they're like you know what it's not worth it if we're gonna come back we need to send the whole crew so, yeah, they ran away. I'm not going to concern myself with the uh, doings of lesser beings. So, yeah, uh, what I'm doing right now is running around and going to grab one of these dandelions because I can use them to make yellow dye. And by making yellow dye, I can mix that with blue dye and make green dye, which will get us the morpho tool that I want because inventory issues are starting to become, well, an issue. What other dye do we need? We need red dye, blue dye, and then there's green dye. So let me grab a little bit of this poppies, a little bit of these poppies. Bam. And we can go ahead and slash home it up and we can get crafting with some of this stuff. Okay, so poppies is red dye. I don't need to make too much of this. Uh, yellow dye. I'll uh, we'll need, yeah, just one of these. Yeah, and then we need some blue dye or lapis, as it's also known. Not how many I wanted to take out, but whatever. Again, I, I don't know how this thing works. I'm, it's kind of confusing, to be honest with you. The whole, uh, this storage scanner crafting mechanic thing. Um, but anyway, we got the Morpho tool. Bam, let's take that. Okay, so like I was saying, with this Morpho tool, we can go ahead and add it here, and we can combine our stuff with it, and it will make it so much easier to do our... Um, crafting in the future because it, it just combines everything into one. Do I have any other like wrench or tool or um, I can't remember if I've made anything else and I can't sort this. So it, looking for other things is not going to be easy to do, but I don't think I have anything else. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's everything that we have. So let's go ahead and put this away. We can put these away. We're going to put those away. Bam, bam. Uh, we have the silicon press. I did want to take a look at these two books that we got last episode. So these are skill books. Um, and we have the Berserker and we have the Swordmaster. Berserker it gives you a bonus attack or bonus attack damage by 0.3% and attack speed by 0.5% per 1% of missing HP. Cannot increase more than five. Okay. And then there is Swordmaster, which is a 30 attack speed bonus when using a katana, longsword, sword, or tachi. Well, what are we using? A tachi. So let's go ahead and um, remember what the button is to choose our abilities, which is the semicolon. And we should be able to pick Swordmaster. Yes, that's the one I want. Um, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to see what that did without having to click on it and learn, but okay. Well, that's that. Uh, we got Sword Master, so now we do a 30% extra damage when we use Itachi. I like it. I'm not going to complain. Anyway, so what do we need to do? Well, we need to go ahead and continue working on AE2. So let's go pop into our quest book and let's see how the quest book wants us to do things versus how I know to do things from watching other people and see if these, these goals align. So the first things first is get some service Quartz. We've done that a while ago, and it's going to give us um, a bunch of different ore, charged and regular service Quartz. It also wants us to go ahead and make the wrench, which we can do, um, and we can probably use nether. Let's look at wrench. We can use nether quartz for this because we have more of that than we have the regular certus quartz at the moment. So we can go ahead and craft this, and then we should be able to combine these. Bam, and we got the morphing tool. And by the way, with the morphing tool, like I said, if I shift scroll wheel it, it will change to its different mods, or um, it should auto switch. Yeah, look, there it goes. Auto switched over for the metallurgic infuser, and for some reason it's not doing it with the RF tools. Yeah, interesting that RF Tools is not doing it because they use the smart wrench, but I think it's because this is RF Tools Power, RF Tools Builder, and then like RF Tools Storage or whatever, and it's just 
it's not recognizing that they're all part of the same mod. That's okay. We can always scroll wheel to it, and we now have the uh, the, the wrench to go with it too. Um, can be used to rotate blocks and instantly disassemble them. So next in the quest book is to get some Fluix crystals. Fluix crystals are another resource, but they don't generate naturally. Instead, throw some charged Certus quartz, nether quartz, and redstone dust into water and wait one second. So let's get some nether quartz. Um, again, I don't know. I don't know the buttons. So we're going to do this and we're going to get half a stack or a quarter stack. Let's get redstone. Need to grab redstone from over here. And charge Certus Quartz too. Do I have, I have 12 of those. Okay. Remember we can charge this up too as needed. Certus. Um, and we have a few here. Did I put all the redstone away too? I did. Oh, goodness. Okay. So, wait. I put the charged Certus away too. Tell you what. You go away. You go away. You come here. Now, this can be enriched, I'm assuming. Yes. So, you can be enriched and... You can be enriched, each of them going into four, which I like. So let's go ahead and drop them into there. Now they won't move over to the other slot. That's okay. They don't need to. Let's go ahead and do this. Put as many of those into there and the buffer, the rest can sit in the buffer. That works perfectly fine. And while we're at it, we're going to do that with coal too, whenever this guy finishes up. We'll go ahead and add coal to this so that it can enrich and get some coal going for us. Um, so now we need to get a bucket. Do I have a bucket in here? I do, and I actually have a bucket of water, um, and I have buckets of lava, but that doesn't help. We're going to grab another bucket of water, and we're going to make an infinite water source in our base. That way I don't have to go out to any rivers anymore, because to be honest, they're not, they're not very close. Yeah, this the epic fight mod made me I did not move to the left. I bounced off of that thing and it's like it's got a stun mechanic. So I like, you know, got all wibbly wobbly. Ooh, do not fall down there. I could go down to that thing that we were looking at before. If you guys remember, there was that that chest I saw. Where was that? Was it down here? Is it below me here? Now that we don't take fall damage. We could go down there. Now, somebody did say that's a mimic, that chest there, and it's not a, an actual chest, but let's see. We got our free runners on. We have the ability to slash home. I'm going to move those there. Let's get weaponed up, and let's go ahead and actually, we'll, we'll drop down here. Now, even though I don't take fall damage, I do get stunned when I land. Okay, I'm going to light it up a little bit. With the few, oh yeah, I forgot. Free runners give you step assist, which is actually kind of nice. I like step assist. Okay, loot barrel. What's in you? Okay, who didn't die? Mana in a bottle, name tag, saddle. Um, this is another thing for multiplayer. I don't need that. Um, yeah, bones will take beetroot. That's red dye. Antlers, sure. And then somebody said this one is a mimic. I'm gonna go ahead and just. Ah, there's TNT. See, that's not redstone. It was TNT. Haha, -ha, close quarters. Don't know what that means. But I'm I'm getting ready to fight something. Open 25 instance chests. Oh, okay. So it wasn't anything like fancy. We'll take the anvil too. It's not damaged or anything, so. And you are uranium, right? You're not emerald? Yeah. What in the world is going on here? What are you, blobfish? They're like falling from the sky and then landing here and then, geez, that scared me. It's because they're they're actually spawning up there because we're far enough away and but this is the only water source, so they fall in there and then hit the ground. Hey, Mr. Creeper, how you doing? We're going home. See you later. Okay, uh, infinite water source. We can just put it right behind our stairs. That's fine. And we can go ahead and actually replace this copper ore with that sandstone that we just had. So it looks nice. Bam, bam, bam. 
Bam. Uh, I would like to, if I can, do I have any more sandstone? I, I have one. Eh, it's okay then. We're going to go here. And we're going to go here for an infinite water source right in our base. Nice. Let's put this junk away that we got from that area. You go away, you, 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 you. And then we can put our... Actually, we can keep the free runners on and only put the other ones on when we actually need to fight. Okay, so what we need to do is then... Oh, I put the redstone away. Son of a gun. So if I click once... Okay, so what we have to do is toss this into here. Bam, bam, bam. Why are you flowing? Good question. Yeah, you're not flowing water. Why did it drift that way? This is not flowing water at all. But hey, we have uh, Fluix crystals. And then we can take these and we can actually make pure ones as needed. Um, if we put them into here, we can do this. And that'll make 16 pure. We can also do the same with these regular Certus and make pure Certus out of that too. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because it'll be good to have... We're going to want pure fluix for some of this crafting process and all that stuff. And plus, we need pure fluix for the um, calculation press anyway. Yeah, calculation press. Yeah. So we'll let this thing get us 16 of these and then we'll put this through and then let it run. And then there's also we can charge it. Can we can we charge this here? There's a way we can charge this. The Crystal Energizer. I thought we had a sneaky way of charging this. But I guess not. Other than the, the, the charger itself should be able to do it. Give me those. And you go in there along with that. Yeah. And you're charge service, right? Yes. Cool. And there's pure service quartz. And I bet you if I grab one of those, that'll finish off the quest. No, maybe. Okay. All right, so you wanted me to get some pure crystals. So I have pure crystals. You also want me to make the crystal seeds, even though I don't need them. Um, okay, but we can go ahead and make the seed, I guess. Nether quartz seed, which is nether quartz dust and sand. And then sand. Again, still don't know how to do this. I am not learning, apparently. You're going to go there, and you're going to go there. That is not... Nope. 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 Seed. Ah, dust, that's why. Duh. I'm dumb. Uh, so I need a crusher or the quartz grindstone. And did I ever... I never set up a crusher, did I? I bet you it's about time to set up a crusher. What do we need for this? It was those two buckets of lava. I remember that. Can I make you? No. So I need two basic control circuits, which is two osmium. I have osmium over there. And then I need steel casing. Uh, I just need osmium. Okay. I should have osmium here. I didn't mean to put my cookies away, but that's okay. Make me one of those. What am I missing? I'm missing steel. Goodness gracious. Um, iron. This is why I'm trying to switch over because this this whole oh it says we have four when we really don't is is really kind of annoying. I do have steel cooked up though, so or well prepped. There we go. I needed two steel because I said I had four, which means I actually have two. So now we can do this. That's going to make the steel casing. Uh, and then I just need two osmium. Into this guy. Where'd they go? Because it's not that guy. It's this guy. Bam. And crusher. 
Got it. Okay. And then I need my energy pipes. Uh, universal cables. And I just want the one regular one. That's fine. Crusher. And then crush up one of those to give me some dust. And actually, it's not even you. It was you that I wanted to crush. And then I can combine you and you, you and you into a seed. Bam, nether quartz seed. And then what you do with these, the normal process is to take this and to drop it into water and they will grow just like that. They won't despawn. They're set to not despawn. Um, and then, but it just, it takes literally forever for it to happen. This is going to give us some more seeds, uh, which it gave us all nether quartz seeds. Thank you, sir. We can go ahead and throw all of those in there as well and let them all grow up together. Okay. Um, it takes a very long time, but eventually it turns into a pure crystal. It's highly re recommended to use crystal growth accelerators as they drastically reduce the time required, which is the next step here is the crystal growth accelerator. Crystal growth accelerator. They use AE power to speed up the growth of adjacent crystal seeds. It is powered from the top or bottom and it speeds up seeds that are touching its sides. You can have up to five surrounding one water block while still leaving room for you to throw in seeds. So basically, you take your water block. If you had a water block here, you could surround it here and then maybe like one in the back. So like back there, that would give you five around it. And then you can throw seeds in there. Bada bing, bada boom. It'll in increase the growth rate of these seeds. Um, now, did these seeds disappear? Because I only see two and I know I threw in like there was like four total or six total. So not sure what happened there. Anyway. Uh, what we're looking to do is, A, get a crystal growth chamber. I believe this will allow us to skip that whole process so we don't need to worry about um, throwing things into the... Oh, I didn't mean to get rid of that. Crystal growth chamber. Um, though I don't know. I don't know what this specifically does because there's also... There's these um, Fluix aggregators, and it requires... No, not this one. The... Pulse centrifuge? Is it you? Inworld crystal growth seeing operations and purifies the crystals by using a crystal growth chamber. So I don't know, like, is this only a crafting process or is this an actual block that can go out into the world? I'm probably going to pop into a uh, creative test world to test that out because I'm not super, super sure. Um, but anyway, our next step now at this point is to go ahead and start getting set up with um, a miner. Um, actually, probably probably a good idea to get a charger as well, because we're going to need to charge some of these crystals, and I don't see an easy way to do so. And again, I forgot you're not GEI synchronized. And if I seem a little bit... Um, oh, I didn't want you to use my peer. I wanted you to use the regular. It said regular here, but it pulled from there. Anyway, um, if I seem a little bit like flustered or discombobulated again because it's because i don't know how this mod 100 percent works and i'm and i'm learning along with you guys so yeah i'm not i'm not flustered or discombobulated i'm just i'm just learning along with you looks like we have to use our advanced cables to power this because it can only accept power from the top and i need one more um universal but if we take these and we put them into, if we take our Certus Quartz crystals and we were to put them into here, bam, it's going to charge it up. And look, you can see it switched over to a charged Certus Quartz and we can take it out, bam, and we're good to go. So can we automate this? I don't know if we can automate it without having some sort of pipe with a filter or using the hopper method in which I fill up a hopper and the only thing I allow to have out of it it would be the charged certus quartz and then i put like coal or something in there so that nothing else can possibly go into it um that would be the only other way i could think of getting that done anyway that's not what we're not what we're working on so what we're working on now is what is this what do you do charge staff entropy manipulator color applicator matter cannon a portable cell this is like a backpack isn't it but it requires energy. I don't know what you are. Charge staff. And I don't. You can charge the charger with a crank. Oh, you can put a crank on it and then don't need power. Nice. You are not an optional quest, though. So I have to do this. So let's go ahead and oh, look, here's those seeds. How did these end up over here? Not entirely sure. 
We're going to go ahead and make that charged staff just because I, I need it for the quest. If we're going to be 100%ing the quest, I need to make this. I don't know what you do, though. Let's put you in here. Do you like fire? Like, can I pew pew? No idea. We'll have to look it up later, though. So what I need to do is make these other calculation presses. So let's get going with all of that. OK, so we need to make three meteorite compasses. One, two, and you need charged certus for this. Which we probably have some in here. Yes. Three. OK, so there are three meteorite compasses and then we need this. We need this. And we need this. Bam. And there are all four of our our logic or our presses that we're going to need. Let's go ahead and clean up a little bit. Um, again, I don't know what this does, so we're going to we're going to hold on to it so we can figure it out. Let's keep these things on us. Iron can go away. You can go away. Let's get those cookies back out so I have some food. Where did the rest of the cookies go? I had I had more than that. Um, what, you're not called a cookie? No, you're called, hey, read the epic fight mod quest. Okay. The cookies really don't, they're not very filling, are they? I mean, I guess that's, that's true for cookies in real life, too. They're not very filling, but, um, anyway. So what we need to do now is go ahead and make our inscribers. And the inscribers are how you craft the, um, you start making the logic circuits and stuff that you need to get into applied energistics. So we're going to need a total of five of these inscribers and require us to make 10 sticky pistons, which is going to require us to make 10 regular pistons. So let's hit the button. Nope, let's not hit the button. Um, a giant log. No. And it figures it wouldn't be or dictionary. So let's get planks. Uh, let's get logs. And we're going to make a stack and a stack. There we go. Now we can make pistons. And we're going to get eight, nine, ten. And we're going to get sticky pistons. Eight, nine, ten. And then we are going to get an inscriber, which is going to want fluix crystals. And I'm going to go ahead and actually take these and toss them over here so it doesn't use my my pure ones because I don't have a backpack to put them in. Otherwise, I would just put them in the backpack. Uh, so we're going to do four and one. That way we have the inscribers taken care of and we're good to go here. Let's go ahead and grab one of these guys. And we're going to go ahead and pop back here and look at these cables. And we're going to right click on one with an infused alloy, which is going to go ahead and upgrade all of those cables for us. And that should have taken care of all of them. And the only reason I did that was because we had to use a few advanced here. So I just want to, you know, make all of them advanced. If you do that with the infused alloys, it'll upgrade eight blocks. So you can right click and it'll upgrade eight of your cables for you. And it is a fantastic um, thing from mechanism that makes it so that you don't have to break your cables and replace them in place. Upgrades are absolutely the way to go. Um, yeah, so we have five inscribers. One, two, three, four, five. Now, the inscribers are complicated little little buggers because they can only accept things from certain sides um, and they can only output uh, to certain sides. So like this top slot fills from the top slot. The uh, bottom slot fills from the bottom um, and the side slot fills from the side, I believe. Let's take a let's actually take a, a, a three dimensional look at one of these guys, right? Let's go ahead and put this here and this here. And then we can take a look at how this how this looks. So we have slots on the sides and the back on the top. And I'm going to assume there is one on the bottom here, right? Yes. So in order to automate these, it's not unfortunately, it's not super duper easy. Um, I'm going to have to I'm actually going to probably look up a tutorial from someone else. Maybe someone used Xnet to do this before. Um, but for now, for our purposes, what we need to do is make the um, applied. I bet you the quest book tells us. Let's see. Oh, the meteorite compass. I actually need to make one. Are you kidding me? To finish that quest.
There, finish the quest. Thank you. I don't want to leave an orphaned quest just sitting there, especially if it's not optional, which it's not, because uh, there's ones here that say optional. Those are those are obviously optional. Um, so our next step is to make an ME controller in here, and it's wanting us to make this stuff. So there's no real, there's no guide on how to set up these inscribers in here. So we're on our own to figure it out. But what we can do is applied energistics. And what we're working on making right now is these things, right? The printed stuff. So we're making a printed silicone, printed logic circuit, printed engineering circuit, and printed calculation circuits. And then we're going to turn those into the actual um, processors, which are these guys here. Now, one thing that we need to look into is how do we make silicone? So we have one option for silicone, and that is by making nether dust into silicone. Okay, so let's grab a stack of nether quartz, that is. We're gonna go ahead and throw this all into the crusher to let it crush up. And it's gonna turn into the dust, which is what we want. And then we're gonna go ahead and it is smelting that. Yes, we're gonna smelt that into silicon. While we're waiting here, we can go ahead and fill that thing up and it's still making the extra pieces that it needs. This has this should have more than enough buffer to be able to handle this, so we can we can go up to 16x speed without having any issues. And it should be in the future, or we should be working towards making upgrades for these guys, especially energy upgrades. But uh, we'll get there when we get there. Okay, so steel ingots are going to go there. So what we need is a couple things. So we need um, redstone. Redstone. We're going to need the processors themselves, and then we're going to need their requisite ingredients, which is going to be, for each one, pure service quartz. So we have that. We're going to need engineering circuits, which requires diamonds, which we have six of. We're going to need gold for the logic circuits. Probably should get some more gold processing, too. And then we're going to need silicone. Okay, so let's see. Diamonds is our limiting factor, so and it doesn't really make too much of a difference. So what we're going to want to do is set these up. So I'm going to do silicone in order of, you know, cost and expense. We're going to go silicone. We're going to do the gold, which is logic. We're going to do diamond. Then we're going to do calculation only because, I mean, pure certus quartz isn't more expensive, but it's more work to make. So we're going to set that up there. And then I need more um, cables. We're going to go ahead and get power into all of these. Um, now, can you get power from the back, actually? This is where our morphing tool would come in handy. I can set this to wrench mode, and I can pick them all up. You can get power from the back, so that's good to know. Uh, we also need to turn off the sound of the crusher while we're here. Good night. Okay, so they all have power. Okay. And so what we're going to do for the silicon press, we're going to go ahead and put our silicon in there. And this is where the inscriber is a pain because I'm going to shift click this in there, right? It only puts one. This can only hold one item in its inventory at a time. And so you have to auto put it into there. Like, or I mean, you have to manually put things into them because you can't, you can't automate it. Not easily, at least. So like I said, I'm going to look into maybe seeing if we can't do this with XNet. At least the, the second slot can hold more than one item. So we can kind of do like a, uh, you know, round robin rotation system going on here to get these things going, but uh, yeah, otherwise it's it's a manual process. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get us, you know, a good decent amount of all of these, and we will come back in the next episode, and we should be able to start diving into actually getting the AE system fully set up um, and going. So what we're gonna need for that is a couple things. We're going to need a controller, at least one, we are going to need disk drive, or is it called a drive? 
ME drive. We're going to need a disk. No. What do you call it? your storage? Storage container cells. Yeah, storage cells. Um, Maybe. Yeah. Now, the way that applied energistic storage works, you're going to see on your storage cells, you're going to have two different numbers. You're going to have 1024 bytes used and you're going to have 63 types. The typing means that um, and it starts at zero. So there's 64 different types that are actually into the in this. But that means you can only have 64 different items stored on one of those cells. So difference between this and refined storage. So this counts as one type. This counts as one type. This counts as one type. And then the 1024 bytes is is each of those types can hold 1024, I believe of that that respective item. So we can have 1024 of this. We can have 1024 of this. We can have 1024 of this. Possibly, I, I'm not 100% on that part, um, but either way, it's probably prudential for us to just go straight to the highest 64K if we possibly can, um, which means we're gonna be crafting a bunch of calculation processors. I'm gonna have to math this out and see exactly how much we're gonna need for all of that, but we should be able to get all of that taken care of and get at least one, maybe two 64Ks, because the, the, the limiting factor with Applied Energistic is those item types, because sure, I could have 65,000, and items inside of this, but I can only have six, 64 different types of items or 63 types. So yeah, it's uh, it, it is more confusing when it comes to managing storage. Unlike refined storage, you can't just make a 64K drive and that holds 64,000 items and you can say, hey, I got it. More thinking is involved with applied energistics. So maybe we'll go with 4K and I'll be able to get like a bunch, maybe like five or six 4K storage cells and then go from there. Um, and then because that way, you know, I'll be able to hold more types of storage. I think that might be a better option. We're also going to want to get ourselves a crafting terminal. We're going to need cables. Um, just regular cables. Is that just is that the Fluix glass cable? Oh, that just takes the colors off. Yeah. OK, so just just cables for now. And then we're also going to want, I believe we're going to need an energy acceptor in order to convert the store, the power over from RF to AE power. Um, but yeah, so that's where we're at. So I'm going to look up an instructions on how to set up this and then we'll start getting into this and do the whole thing. So if you enjoyed this episode, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I do appreciate it. And it really does help out the channel. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.